Hey guys, welcome back to the Motorcycle Fixer channel. So this evening we go going to transfer the gearbox and the gear change or the gear selector drum into the other half of the casing um, because the way we've taken it apart it needs to transfer it into the other case. I'll show you that in a second. But first, intro! Right, like I said, like I said before the intro, we need to now transfer this gearbox and gear selector arm and drum into the other half of the casing. The reason for that is that I can't set this up. The gear selector, gear change arm. I can't. I'm unable to set that up in this half of the casting. As you can see, it's all loose. So what I need to do. Is I need to put this and the well all of it basically I need to put this whole gearbox in that other half um, and then I can drop this case on the top of it right I've, I've set it out now so I'm trying to show you the disassembly as well as assembling it on this half but yeah it's difficult to work out with the way with it with the flip like this but okay right we're gonna take out let me, can I zoom in on this half a minute? We're going to pull out these selector arms, this pin. One out, and I'm going to pull this rod out then as well. And I'm going to line that one up as well. Then I'm going to move. all these gear selectors away from our gear selector drum our gear selector drum now comes off and this goes into this part oh these stupid blocks um goes into this part here that little pin there spring loaded pin oh you can't see it Okay, that spring-loaded pin there is our neutral switch and that picks up on this little pin here so that when that pin is lined up with our brass um, plunger that's how the bike knows then that it's in neutral because it makes an electrical contact through the two of them so that goes in that there. Okay, we're gonna try and work this up now. How to put it in <laughs> upside down. So a gear selector shaft and arm. This sits. So the pin obviously sits in that hole there. And this lug on the casting, this one, sits between that spring there. And that's what returns your gear lever to the correct position. So this gear selector arm goes with this spring. This spring sits on that, like that. And then this part of the spring sits against the side of the casting. So what we've got to try and do is put this part in. So I think we put the spring on. I've, I've never assembled one of these, but we'll get there now. So and then we put this.
Let's do a try a different way. And then we'll push that spring in like that. I don't know. Let's take our gear drum back out, does it? Now I know that has to go there like that. So if we put... Right, so I put the spring over there, like so. Then I'm going to put the gear detent lever in with the spring on it, like so. Then we're going to push this gear shaft in and push it down over that leg, like we spoke about, like so. Okay, with me. Then this arm and this arm have to go like that, like so, <sighs> like that. Okay, did you get that? Let's see if I can show you. Do you want me to do that again? <laughs> Okay, there we are. So our two levers I'll take this out a minute just so you can see. So there's our two levers now like this. Our gear shaft is all the way down and our two levers are there like so, okay, need to make sure that that spring is on that arm there, like that. Okay, so then what we're going to do, we're going to hold both of these levers out of the way like that with my thumb. And we will put the gear change drum in and then We'll release our spring loaded arms like so, and then we'll make sure that they are in the right place. Like so. It's fairly straightforward, really, if you know what you're doing. Which I don't. I, I can work it out though. Okay, so there's our gear change drum fitted. So now what we need to do is we can put this set of the new output shaft in and what we want is to transfer this arm over into the bottom of there. So we're going to turn it over and this one rides in that bottom slot of the gear change drum. You can make sure though that this that this goes into there on you here, okay? So we're going to drop that in again and then we're going to put there into there. Okay. Now I'm going to remove this second one, but I can't use it yet, so I'm going to just leave it there in a minute. And this one here, I'm going to leave there like that. Okay. And this gear, gear cluster now, the old one. <coughs> Let me lift the camera up a bit for you. This gear cluster, I'm going to pull out in one go. 
I might have to just give it a tap. Stay. There we are. And we're going to pull. We'll try and pull our complete gear cluster out in one go. Why won't you come out? Oop. There we are. Okay, so. Stay, 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 stay. So this is our complete input shaft and I need to try and get this one alongside this one so like so there we are so that's that one incomplete Now this is the part then that we've just replaced, yeah? It's the same, but this one is the one that's damaged on the end. Okay, so that can go. Yeah, I can do what you want there, really. Who cares? <laughs> then these gears need to be turned over onto this one. Now you may need to pull up on them just to get them to go past and mesh like that and we have this spacer there then I've got this gear goes over but that one has a bearing in it like so and then this one has a space on the top. There you have it. Okay, so that's our gearbox transferred over. Make sure there's no washers stuck to this side, as always. Now it's just a matter of, and I'll turn this round for you. Now it's just a matter of putting our forks in, so this fork now goes in between, like we said, the groove, but there's a groove on the top one. So we can put that one in and put it in the groove. And then this one, as we turned over, goes in the groove on this side and goes in the middle groove of the gear selector drum. Okay. Then we have our rods that go through the arm and into the bottom hole. It's a tight fit because it's pushing back out. And then <coughs> the other gear selector rod goes through the both of these. Make sure that the follower goes into the gear selector drum. You're going to put that through the hole. And then same on the bottom one, make sure that the follower is in that bottom groove. And then line the holes up and push it through into the hole in the bottom of the casting. Like so. And there we have, this should spin now. If, it, so if this doesn't spin, there's something wrong. If it spins, it's okay. Beautiful. There we are, that's our gearbox switched over. And that is that part of the job finished. Now that's all we need is I'm waiting for the gasket for this face and then I can put this half back on here. Jobs are good. I'll see you in five minutes, it's going to be more like a week for me.
So have a lovely evening. It's a few days later for me so it's time to put the next part of our jigsaw puzzle together. Do a couple of camera shots of the way it goes together for you close up so that you can see how it goes. YouTube have got a new tool now that you can zoom in uh, to videos which is excellent. Um, so just close up for you to show everything it goes. These um, gear selector forks. This one has got like a an O or C cast on to it. Um, this one in here has got an L. Don't know if you can see that. And the one on the bottom I think I believe has an R, but whatever that has on it, this one's got like a C, this one's got an L, so that should be a way of identifying them. We've got a washer on here and we've got a spacer on here and that's how it goes together so hopefully from that you can pause and zoom in at any point so hopefully that'll be helpful for you. I'm just going to go around now and make sure that all the old gasket is off the gasket faces. Make sure they're all nice and smooth. And make sure that we don't have any leaks on our bottom end. So I'll do that and then you can come back. So I've cleaned all the gasket faces. Um, I just use a razor blade and clean it very gently. You don't want to cut into the aluminium. I'd usually when I get a new one of these, I'll rub it on something concrete or something just to take the edge off it and then it's, so it doesn't dig in. Um, that's what I use anyway. Right, okay, so I'm going to give this now copious amounts of oil. Make sure everything is lubricated. Uh, ready for start up. So we just want to give it lots and lots of oil, like so. Make sure that everything's well lubricated. Okay, here's our new gasket. Put that over our pe pegs, pins, whatever, and the spring plunger here. And then this half. with the crank in it, so just sit on top of that. All being well in the world. Ah, right, okay, sorry, I forgot to oil the inside of this shell bearing in here. Give that a good lubrication as well. And of course, our shaft on our Crank. Just gonna give that a good coating of oil, and also the crank gear itself needs to be lubricated. Okay, lovely jubbly. Now it's just a matter of putting our crank assembly half. back on so something like this 
です。So we make sure all this is clean. But the oil has dripped out. Okay, so. Sure, we've got room at the bottom for the crank to come through. And then we're just going to drop it on, making sure that it's all aligned as it goes on. Just might need to just. my mallet there it is so you might just want to give it a bit of a wiggle and a tap and that is all the way home all the way home now as you when you're assembling the engines it's essential that you test each part as you're going along so you can fix any problems immediately rather than get into the whole engine assembly and then finding out that you've got to take it all apart again so there we are our gear shaft still spin the faces between the two halves are together our crank spins, although I've got to be careful because the cam chain is caught there, so I just need to work out how to get that back around, but that's okay, no problem. So there we are, that's our bottom half buttoned up. What I need to do now is to... Oh, turn it around like that. So that I can put all my bolts back in from this side. The bolts will just go back in as they come out. Um, I read in the manual that it's 10 newton meters for these bolts. This is very similar for all the um, flange head bolts going into aluminium. 10 newton meters, that's the limit. And I'm just gonna screw all that together now we have all the casings screwed together so it's time to put all the other bits and pieces together so first we're going to put our idle gear on then we've got our second idle gear that runs off the starter motor and we've got the sleeve and then we've got a washer that sits on there. Now we can fit our uh, flywheel. So we need to make sure that this, this taper is clean. No bits that can stop it from uh, gripping. So we've got our starter clutch, turns one way, and our flywheel, make sure the taper in the flywheel is nice and clean, and then we're going to sit it in one piece down onto the woodruff key, there we are, make sure that that is all the way on to the taper, and then, oh, there we are. Um, there's Loctite on this nut, but I'm just going to put it on hand tight and then I'm going to turn the engine over to put the clutch together so you can see how that goes. So that's how that goes. I'm going to take this washer and this spacer and this wheel actually 
because I'm not going to be able to put turn it over without it falling off. Let's put those in there like so. Right, now we're going to turn it over. It's getting heavier and heavier now because all the bits are going back on. Ooh. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Now we'll idle gear back on, which goes there. So we need to put our the our idle gear back on on the shaft there. And there's a washer that goes on there, and then our circlip. Where the circle is in the groove and that this can't come back off. So there we are, that's our circle in place. Reassembling our clutch bearings now. When we took it off, we put them to the bits together with a cable tie. So we've got Spacer first, then we've got the thin roller bearing, then the thicker roller bearing, and then we put our clutch basket on. Clean up any little bits that's in there. Make sure everything's nice and clean when you're reassembling it. So, there we are. Okay. And this sits on there. Making sure that you mesh all the gears. And there we are. Mesh all the gears with the gears on the, on the back of the clutch. There we are. Okay. You might need to just turn the gears behind just to get them all to mesh because it meshes with one, two, three, four gears all together. So you might just have to give it a little wiggle. That's the clutch basket on. Then it's our splined washer that goes on the splines. But then you want to turn it so that it's not in line with the splines so that your clutch basket won't come back off. If I show you this without the clutch basket on there, see it turns in that groove. So gotta line this up again now. It's okay though. No problem, no problem. So when you put it on, like I say, you just want to turn it a little bit if you can, and then it will stop this coming off. That's the idea of how it works, yours. Okay, then now we have our inner clutch. Make sure it's nice and clean. We've got a little ring there that we didn't want to lose. 
if you've watched the video of taking it apart. So that just slots on like so. Then we can rebuild our clutch plates so as they come off. So our last one. Okay. And we need to put our washer onto the splines. First of all though, I need to flatten this off so that we can tighten the nut up and then bend it back up onto the nut. So I'm just gonna flatten that a second with a hammer. And that then sits over the very end of that spline shaft. Stops it from turning. And then we're going to put our nut on. The recess in the nut goes inwards so that it doesn't, doesn't interfere with the end of the splines. So we need to just tighten that up. I'm just going to whiz this up now with, the, with my uh, torque driver like so and then what we have to do then is we need to bend up the edge of this washer like it was uh, to stop the nut from undoing there was Loctite on the nut so that'll stop it but you also need to bend up the edge of that washer. So, stop saying so. The easiest way I find to bend up the edges of the washer is with hair pipe grips like this. Um, you might be able to show you or might not. And it's easier to do it with the pipe grips like this and then if you bend the edge up with your pipe grips like that I'm hoping you can see that how it works um, trying to do it one-handed so yeah if you just do it like this with the pipe grips and then you just want to squash the washer onto one of the flats of the nut like that I'll show you what it's like once I've done it there we are so if you see the washer bent up onto the side of the nut and that stops the washer from t uh, the sorry the nut from turning because the washer's on the splines so the washer can't just uh, turn on its own and then the nut can't turn because the washer's pressed onto it there see okay that's that part completed that's that part completed so now we can assemble the rest or the outer part of the clutch so we need to sit this in and it needs to go all the way down and meet this face needs to meet this pressure plate um, it can sometimes sit proud so you want to need to make sure that there's no gap between this face and the pressure plate once it's assembled otherwise you won't have any clutch so there's a there's a gap that uh, no gap there in between Okay, 
and then we're going to put we're going to put the springs and the bolts in six of those you don't need to see me doing these up so it's just a matter of doing these up same as as we undone them there we are all six I've done up all the bolts on the clutch now everything on this side clutch out is fitted so I'm going to leave this side cover off so I uh, so I've got access to the cam chain when I put the top end on um, but make sure so when I do the timing I need to make sure it's on this bottom sp uh, gear sprocket so I'm gonna as I said and then I leave this side covered off so that we've just got to finish off the other side and then that's the end of this video really don't forget to hit the like button if you've watched the video and you like uh, the videos that I make if you haven't already please subscribe we've got lots of videos coming in the future lots of plans for different things and if there's something that you think will help improve the channel or videos you'd like to see then please comment below um, I won't take offense honestly I, it would really help me out if you give me some advice um, at the end of the day I make this channel for people to enjoy so if you do have any ideas then let me know comment below uh, I'd need to um, I've already had a really good comment of somebody saying that I need to do easier stuff like servicing and things like that which I have taken on board. Um, I have to get rid of some of these projects out of the way so I can get other bikes in um, but I do plan on doing that in the near future. So if there's anything else you want to um, see on the channel or you, anything you that will help me improve the channel and make it uh, better viewing for you um, and more interesting for you then please let me know in the comments and don't forget to smash the like button we just need to refit these gears then on this side so there's our starter idle gear our little spacer goes on then our washer can go on talked about changing the washer this washer gear because this has a split in it and I didn't know whether or not it had to. So I did some research, looked at the diagrams and the drawings of the part. And this that washer is supposed to have a split in it there. So we can reuse the one that's on there. So there you go. Okay. And now I can just, this nut has oh, um, Loctite on it. So I'm going to spin that up now with my impact gun and then we're ready to put the case in on this side I'm just gonna raise it up and there we are fully and on now we can put the case in on A matter of refitting the casing with the bolts everything else is on this side so it's just a matter of fitting the casing back on the magnet will pull it on and then locating it on pull the dowels And there we are done you don't need me to, you don't need to see me putting all the bolts back in this case in so 
that's this video finished. Like I say, if you want anything, if you want me to do a video on something that you want to see, uh, let me know in the comments. It'll really help me out. I do appreciate it. Um, if you think that the channel's rubbish, let me know. It don't matter. Uh, constructive criticism is good. Um, so just let me know below if there's anything that you would like to see. Thanks very much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye.